eight reasons why we take the Holy Communion. Each of these reasons start with letter C to help you remember eight C's for the Holy Communion. Number one, the Holy Communion is Christ's meal. It is the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, 24 to 25, the words of Jesus as quoted by the Apostle Paul when he was trying to teach the church at Corinth this same subject I'm teaching you today. Jesus said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. I'll try to illustrate stuff as Jesus did on that day. So he said, Take it. This is my body. He never said, this is a symbol of my body. He was lifting bread. He never called it an element or a symbol or it's symbolic. Those words are not in the Bible. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 to 25. Matthew 26, 28, Jesus said, For this is my blood. He was not lifting his blood. He was lifting wine. But he didn't say this is a symbol. He said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus invited us to eat his body and to drink his blood. Basically, he invited us to eat him. Let's, let's look at it again. You know, God's ideas are radical. They have nothing to do with human thoughts. Look at John 6, 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. They were confused. How can this man tell us to eat his flesh? For the avoidance of doubt, he said in John 6, 53, Jesus said to them, very truly, this is the truth and nothing but the truth. I tell you, unless you eat the flesh, the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. The one thing prohibited in the old and the new covenant is eating blood. In the New Covenant, you read that you're free to eat whatever you want. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Paul tells you not to be judged based on what you eat or drink. Yet, one thing is prohibited even in the New Testament, and that is blood. And the argument given in scriptures is this. The life of the animal is in the blood. That's the reason why doctors do a blood test to check your health. For the life of, a, of an animal is in the blood. The life of Jesus is in his blood. The Bible says he poured his life. What did he pour? He poured his blood. Yet the Bible says he poured his life. And today nutritionists tell us you are what you eat. So the Lord is saying, if you eat me, you have life in you. Look at John 6, 53 again. If you don't drink my blood, you have no life in you. So the Lord is saying, if you eat my, my body and drink my blood, you have life in you. You trade your life for the life of God. The life of Christ begins to flow through your veins. The blood that came out of Emmanuel's veins begin to flow in your veins. Blood that brings eternal life. The Lord Jesus appeared to two disciples on their way to a village named Emmaus. He talked with them and opened the scriptures for them to explain how the Messiah was to suffer and be raised again on the third day. Notice Although he talked with them and taught them scriptures, they never recognized him until he broke bread. They were, these are the disciples. One of them was Simon. 
the bishop of the church. They never recognized him, walking with him, talking with him. And he wasn't discussing politics. He was showing them how the Messiah was to suffer from their law, from the Psalms, and from the prophets. But they never recognized him until he broke bread. Why? The bread and the wine. The Holy Communion reveals Jesus. Luke 24, 30 to 31. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. This is the bread that reveals Christ because it is Christ's meal. Number two, the Holy Communion is a covenant meal. The new covenant. Every covenant has a seal. There are seven messianic covenants in the Bible. If you missed that teaching, look for it in my YouTube channel. The first one is the Adamic covenant, seal, tree of life, which we were prohibited. The second covenant is the Noahic covenant, seal, the rainbow. The third covenant is the Abrahamic covenant, seal, circumcision. The fourth covenant is the Mosaic covenant. Some theologians call it the Sinai Covenant, seal the law. The fifth covenant is the Davidic Covenant, seal the temple. That's why David said, I'll enter thy temple with praise. The sixth covenant is the new covenant, seal the blood of Jesus. The seventh and the last covenant is the eternal covenant, seal the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians, that 430, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. It is the last covenant, the eternal covenant. When the Lord Jesus returns, what will make you to be picked and someone else left is the Holy Spirit resident in you. He is the guarantor and the guarantee of the eternal covenant. So every covenant has a seal. The new covenant was sealed on the cross. The only right you have to approach the throne of God is the blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant. In Matthew 26, 28, Jesus said, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The Holy Communion is a covenant meal. You enter into covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Covenants has conditions for both parties. The Lord commits to you to forgive your sins, to heal you from all sicknesses, to supply to all your needs, including emotional needs, spiritual needs, relational needs. He guarantees you eternal life in the new covenant. You are part of the new covenant. In the new covenant, your role is to give, to respond to the Lord in worship, in serving him. You respond to that covenant in worship. That's how the covenant is complete. 1 Corinthians 11.25 This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And I want you to keep remembering. He never once said these symbols or these elements. What we use. He said this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Jesus takes communion seriously. Number three. The Holy Communion is a community meal. The unity of the church. It is what brings the church together. Many tribes in the Middle East, including Jews and many tribes among the Arabs, during mealtime, they sit together with a large platter. They eat from one plate. I have been invited by some Muslims to dine with them in their house. They sit together. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying. When you take the Holy Communion, we are one family. We dine together. It's a community meal. You can't just take it alone. You can take it as a family in your house. But you take with other believers. Matthew 28, 27 to 28. Drink from it, all of you. The key word here is, all of you. Otherwise, you are not part of the community. 
You are not part of the church of Jesus Christ. Verse 28. For this is my blood of the new covenant. Covenant with you individually and corporate covenant. You enter into covenant with your fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you do not have a choice over the communion. The Lord said all of you. The only one who was not allowed to the table was Judas. The Lord told him to leave that communion table. This is for the body of Christ. The body of Christ feeding on the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the church feeding on the body of Christ. The communion. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11.33. So my dear brothers and sisters, when you gather for the Lord's table, wait for each other. And in that entire chapter, he gives a lot of mannerisms and ethics and etiquette for the Lord's dining table. And then he says something serious. This is the reason many of you are sick and some of you have fallen asleep because you have taken the Lord's table in an unworthy manner. What's that? Division, discord, fightings. You are divided amongst yourselves. There is hypocrisy within you. So examine your heart to be sure it's in the right place. Over the years, the church has taught a misleading doctrine that you cannot come to the communion when you are a sinner. I want to correct that. You don't come to the communion table because you're perfect. It is the communion table that perfects you. It is the precious blood of Christ that makes you perfect. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Continuous tense. When you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus cleansed you. And as a Christian, you are continually cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So you don't approach the communion table based on your righteousness, but based on the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord never intended any of us to focus on our sins and be guilty. That's the work of the enemy. The Lord wanted us to focus on the cross and the finished work of Jesus on the cross. So every time we come to the communion table, Actually, the communion table cleanses us. We don't procure some cleansing and then come to the table. No! This is the blood that cleanses us from all sins. I'm not sure whether we are communicating. Are we? In Acts 2, 42 to 47, we learn how the, the first church, the church launched by Jesus in person, responded to the communion. Look at verse 42, Acts 2. They, the church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Every time they met together, they did four things. Number one, they were taught by the apostles. Number two, fellowship with one another. That's why I'm inviting you 7th of August for us to fellowship together. Number three, to the breaking of bread. There was no single meeting without the breaking of bread. This is one area the Catholic Church is more correct than any other church. Every time they met together, they broke bread. And number four, they prayed together. Every time they gathered, they broke bread. Verse 43. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Miracles were commonplace. They broke bread, they prayed, they were taught the word of God, and they fellowshiped. Miracles happened every gathering. Verse 44. And I dare say this before I read verse 44. If we want to see miracles in every single moment, every single day of the church, we must come back to the Lord's table and prayer to the teachings I'm giving you, apostolic teachings, doctrinal teachings of who Christ is on the cross. And we must love one another. Fellowship with one another. Look at verse 44. All the believers were together and had everything, everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to anyone who had need. And I'm excited by the grace of God. We have started a food program here. 
that nobody in this church can claim they don't have food. We have food for you if you lack food. Verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. Look at verse 46 again. Every day, every day. These guys broke bread daily. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who have been saved. God's favor comes when there is unity. How pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Psalms 133. You begin to experience breakthroughs in your businesses, in your places of work. And favor with your family members because of the unity we have as a church. And then the world sees the unity and they come saying, I want to be part of this family. I want to get saved. There is something unique with these guys. I want to join them. Number four, the Holy Communion is a commemoration meal. The Lord Jesus emphasized, do this in remembrance of me. It's a memorial meal. The Holy Communion reminds us of Christ's suffering. Every time you come to the Holy Communion, you always see the cross. Think about this and try it today when I'm serving you the communion. You will notice every time you take the communion, the Lord brings the cross to you. You begin seeing Calvary. In Luke 22, 19, Jesus said, And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The one thing I want you to remember about me is the cross. The passion of the Christ. The suffering, the price he paid on the cross. This is how the Lord wants us to remember him. Many people want to be remembered for their wealth, their influence, their power. Jesus wants to be remembered for his suffering on the cross for us. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 to 25. And when he had given thanks, Jesus broke the bread and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this every time you take this bread in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Why should we take? This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. It's my memorial meal. Number five. The Holy Communion is the celebration meal. I'm teaching you these things because I've never heard the communion taught anywhere. Maybe you have. But I know it's my responsibility to teach it to you. It's a celebration meal. It reminds us the victory at the cross. Not just how Jesus suffered on the cross, but what he accomplished by his suffering. On the cross, he defeated sin, death, and the devil. The Bible says they overcame him, the devil, the disciples, the saints. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12, 11. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. In John 6, 54, Jesus said, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Not will have, already has. This is victory right now. And victory thereafter. And I'll raise them up at the last day. Even though you bury their body right now, they already have eternal life. They are sleeping with it. I'll raise them up at the last day. They have crossed from death to life. Victory at the cross. The Lord Jesus, personified as Melchizedek, met Abraham after Abraham rescued his nephew Lot where he was captured. Let's read Genesis 14, 18 through 20. Then Melchizedek, king of Solem, 
brought out bread and wine. After the defeat of the kings, the Lord brings to Abraham communion, bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. Jesus comes in the order of Melchizedek as the eternal priest holding communion to celebrate victory. Verse 19. And he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by, by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. So he says, Hey, Abraham, you didn't defeat four kings because of how skilled you are. Abraham only had three 18 soldiers. These were four kings. And the Lord says, The reason you defeated them. God delivered your enemies into your hand. He came with communion, the victory meal. The Holy Communion, number six, is a curing meal, or rather a curative meal. It keeps us in perfect health. When the children of Israel were living in Egypt on that particular night, the Lord told them to take communion. Psalms 105, 37. The Bible says, He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes, no weakling. None among them fell sick. Think about this. When they ate from the Lord's table, none of them died, and none of them was sick. None of them. Until they reached Mount Sinai. When they said, we can do all the Lord's commands. We have the capacity to do everything God commands us. And they immediately fell from grace to law. And from that moment, they began to become sick and to die. And they were then captured by the Babylonians and the Middle Persians and the Greeks and the Romans. When Jesus was born, they were captured by the Romans. So Jesus came back. To invite us back to grace. Because all along after Mount Sinai, they were at the law. You fulfill the law, you are blessed. You break one law, you have broken all the laws. You are under God's curse. What a tragedy to be under God's curse. When God is fighting you, there is no one who can deliver you. So when Jesus comes back, he comes to redeem us from the curse of the law. And he takes us back to grace. Abraham was operating at a grace. Jacob operated at a grace and Isaac. The Jews operated at a grace after dining on the Passover lamb. The Bible says in Psalm 78, 24 to 25, He rained down manna for the people to eat. What was manna? The Bible says, He gave them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. That's why they couldn't be sick. That's why they couldn't die. They ate the grain of heaven, the bread of angels, the bread of life. They fed on Jesus Christ. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, the ordinary bread, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Every word. Jesus is the word of God. As we read in John 1.1, and that word became flesh. And that word invited us to feed on that word. The communion table. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. When the Jews on that Passover night ate the Holy Communion, God looked forward to the cross, the Passover lamb of God. They ate as a shadow of the Passover lamb of God. But now, when we come to the Lord's table, we don't eat on the shadow. We eat, we feed on the Christ meal. We feed on Christ, the bread of God. So before the cross, God looked forward to the cross. He healed them, not because of the blood of bulls and lambs and havers that they shed. They were doing that, focusing to the cross. And for us, we look back to the cross. So both the old covenant and the new covenant, we all look to one Passover lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. 
No single lamb set them free from their sins. They were doing that, looking forward to the cross. And for us, the Passover lamb has been sacrificed. It's illegal for you to live in sickness. Jesus was striped. His body was broken that you may be healthy. It's illegal for you to walk in poverty. This is the reason he was crucified naked, completely poor, that you may become the riches of God. It's illegal for you to be distressed and depressed because of your circumstances. Jesus was distressed to the extent blood came from all over his body at Gethsemane long before he was striped, long before he was pierced, so that you may have the peace of God that transcends your circumstances. It's illegal for any of God's children to go struggling. Struggling is a curse. I call it by its name. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You are never intended to live life sufficiently. Barely making ends meet from paycheck to paycheck. You are created to live abundantly. To be able to give those who are in need. Beyond your needs. To refresh those who are in need. May this grace be upon you. In Jesus name. Jesus is our victory meal. Number seven. The Holy Communion is our confession meal. Whenever we take the Holy Communion, we profess our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 11:26 For wherever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You identify yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ as his follower, as a Christian. Every time you take the communion, you're saying, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 That's the confession you're making every time you come to the communion table. You're saying, I identify with Christ on the cross. I identify with him in his resurrection. I have crucified the flesh. I have died to this world. I live for the audience of one. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. It's our confession meal. It is the meal that says we are born again. We are children of the most high God. We die with angels, God's family here on earth. And the ones in glory. Number eight and the last one, the Holy Communion, is a congratulatory meal. We shall congratulate each other on that high table with true wine, seasoned wine, prepared for 2,000 years. The Lord said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. When it's complete, I'll come to pick you. The older wine takes, the better the quality. He's been preparing this wine. Guess for how long? 2,000 years. It is the overcomer's reward. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 26, 29. Let's read. But I said to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When Jesus served them the first communion in the new covenant, he said, guess what? When you come back to glory where I'm going, the first thing is this fruit of the vine. We shall first celebrate the Holy Communion and congratulate each other. What a toast. We shall toast the first thing in heaven. Woo! Hey, you're here, Dr. Gozi. Yee! That's the first thing. Liz, you, you're here. Toast, toast, toast. That's what he's saying. When you reach there, the first thing is to toast once again. Revelation 2 verse 7. To the one who is victorious, I'll give the right to the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. Which is in the paradise of God. In the first paradise, the garden of Eden, 
we were prohibited, denied access to the tree of life. Why? We rebelled against God and dined on the evil tree. Sin came to the world because of a mere act of eating. Eating the tree of death. Life comes back by eating from the tree of life. Jesus Christ. And he is saying, when you come back to glory, the first thing you'll be given access to the tree you are prohibited. The tree of life. And the Bible says in Revelation 22, 3, that tree of life, its leaves are for the healing of the nations. It brings health. One tree we ate it, we died. One tree we eat, we have eternal life and no one can take it from us. This tree is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says we shall have access to this tree for eternity. I say there are seven covenants. The first covenant is the Adamic covenant. Guess what? This is the only covenant that was not sealed. We were not allowed to touch the seal, the tree of life, lest we live in a fallen nature forever. Every other covenant was sealed. The Noahic covenant was sealed by the rainbow. The Abrahamic covenant was sealed by circumcision. The Davidic covenant was sealed by the temple, the praise in the temple. The new covenant was sealed by the blood of Jesus. The eternal covenant is already sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's sealed. Only one was not sealed. The very first one. The new covenant. So Jesus says, hey, it's going to be sealed. Eternal life. You will live in a state where you cannot fall sick. You cannot fall hungry. Because you are feeding on the bread of God. You are like the angels above. You have access to what was yours in God's original plan. The tree of life. In verse 17, Revelation 2. To the one who is victorious, I'll give some of the hidden manna. What is Jesus saying? The Holy Communion up to now. Abraham, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah. Apostle Peter, John, James, Paul, they have never accessed it. We shall take the communion together, God's entire family, across all ages. It is still hidden manna. We shall partake of it. The final congratulatory meal, it's still hidden for all of us to come together as God's great family. So in closing, we take the Holy Communion for eight reasons. One, it's the Christ meal, the body of Christ. Two, it's the covenant meal, the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. Three, it's a community meal, unity of the church. It's a community meal or a church meal. Still let us see. Number four, it's a commemoration meal. Reminds us of Christ's suffering. Number five, it's a celebration meal. Victory at the cross. Victory over sin, death, and the devil. Number six, it's a curing meal or curative meal. Keeps us in perfect health. Number seven, it's a confession meal. Every time we take communion, we profess our faith. And number eight, it's a congratulatory meal. The overcomer's reward. We shall be invited to the table, the wedding supper of the Lamb, and dine on the communion meal again. Were you blessed by this message? Are you blessed by my ministry? I would like to invite you to be my ministry partner by sending me your love offering every month. I've shared with you the giving options on the screen. Help me to spread the gospel around the world. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to hit the bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. And if you're visiting the Atlanta Metropolis, or you live around the Toronto area, welcome to Family Church, 287 Mount Calvary Road, Marietta, Georgia.